on Norm Duke to get his thoughts centered. Peace, love, and bowling. That's Norm Duke's mantra. Now that was a strike worth the wait. 50 years and still rolling strong. Watch the lumber... Throughout its 50 years of history, viewers have been entertained by the feats of bowling's best. Last week at the PBA World Championship, Norm Duke became the first player in history to capture three consecutive major championships. Today, the tour stops in the heartland, Omaha, Nebraska. Who's next to rewrite history? The Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour starts now. Yeah, see that all the time, you know. And we welcome you to Omaha, Nebraska, and one of the great new bowling centers in America, Thunder Alley. Today, the PBA will crown two champions as we have a men's and women's final at the Pepsi Viper Championship. Plenty of topics on tap today. Walter Ray Williams Jr. seeks his 45th title as he eclipses the $4 million earnings mark. Brad Angelo and Chris Loeschetter both have the opportunity to earn their first ever PBA title. The Big Nasty, Texas's Wes Malad, is here to inflict pin damage like only he can. And the ladies take to the PBA stage for the first of seven times this season. And we welcome you to week two of the PBA Tour. Rob Stone joined by Randy Peterson again. When Walter Ray Williams Jr. first turned pro in 1980, career earnings lists were nowhere on his radar. But today, the living legend has eclipsed yet another PBA milestone. Well, Rob, it's funny when we were talking to him last night, he said, you know, when I first started, I just wanted to make a living at this. I didn't want a nine to five job, but all Walter Ray has done as well, he became the first player to eclipse two million in career earnings. Then in 2003, became the first player to eclipse three million in career earnings. And because of his performance this week, he is now the only player to eclipse the four million dollar mark. Rob, I don't think Walter Ray will be looking for a job anytime soon. He's working for a living. Our number one seed, Chris Loeschetter, seeking his first title of a six-year career. And Chris Loeschetter just keeps getting better and better every time he bowls on television. Remember last season at the U.S. Open, he shot 245 only to lose to the eventual champ, Norm Duke. But today, he finds himself in the best position in a stepladder format, the number one seed. He only needs one win today. And speaking of that stepladder format, we begin with our number four versus three matchup. The big nasty Wes Malott comes out swinging right out of the gate as he takes on Brad Angel, who's also seeking his first tour title. Brad looking for that elusive first victory, but he's got to get past the big nasty, and this guy knows how to win on television. And we will begin with a great sign shot. And the big nasty, one of our favorite venues here, Omaha, Nebraska. They, they come out in droves and bring their signs with them, and we appreciate it. Wes Malott, who is a bowler and a defensive lineman's body, 6'5", 250. Won his third career title last season, has now won one title in each of his last three seasons. And West may be in an ornery mood today. His Texas Longhorns took it on the chin last night. It's been a while. <laughs> West tried to bowl on the right lane, and he's on the left lane. Hey, you tell West what lane to bowl on. I'm not going to do it. Leaves the 4 7. Wes Malott was the leader after qualifying in this event. And here he's going to drift just a little bit high, leaving the 4 7. And anytime you put your hands up like this, Rob, it's because uh, you just got a good break and didn't split. Wes was tied for seventh with one game remaining in the round of 16 and shot a 268 to leapfrog from seventh to fourth. Here is Brad Angelo, has finished second four times, the most recent last season's CLR Windy City Classic when he was the number five seed and eventually fell to Robert Smith in the title match.
first strike of the afternoon. Angelo drops all 10 as we take a look at our tournament format. Field of 136 has been whittled down to four. 14 games of qualifying, they cut to the top 32 for nine games of match play, and then that field was then reduced to the top 16 for another nine games of match play. Brad Angelo, again, looking for his first career victory. Brooklyn it, yeah! You need breaks like that to win those titles, Randy. Uh, yeah, luck never hurt anybody, mm -hmm. and, and you know this. Brad's been on the short end of the uh, of the break stick, if you will, and right here he goes through the nose. This is just a huge break, especially when you're working on a strike. And he's got a little smirk as he sits in the chair as well. <laughs> Here's Malat steps up, working on a spare. Oof. Dangerously close and gets all ten to go as well, and gets the crowd back in his favor. And this shot could have been zero real easy. That was very close to the outside edge of the lane. And as you mentioned earlier, he defeated Bill O'Neill in position round to leapfrog from seventh to make the telecast. Pretty soon I won't need to do this. Now, he didn't think he had a chance until about halfway through that match, Randy, when some of the guys started coming over and telling him, you know, some folks are struggling over there. Hang, hang in there. He, he thought he would be home today celebrating his son's Jordan's baseball party. The Gators, the family, they kind of worked around West's schedule for the big baseball party, and West can't make it, and uh, you could hear the pain in his voice when he told me about that one. So, Gators, hope you're having a good party. That's pretty bold. Yeah, real good stuff by the big nasty. Remember, he went high, just a pinch high the last time on that left lane, and that one was dead flush perfect. Brad Angelo looking to open up with a three-bagger. Here's how he qualified. This is 14th TV show. Split second, he was staring at a 7-10. Take a look at Brad Angelo's game. Very steady head, high back swing, gets that hand to open up. And notice very little, if any, slide once he gets to the foul line. Very steady, great athletic position when he gets there. And almost pays the price for that last break he got. Takes care of the 10, his first spare of the afternoon. Talked to him about his preparations for today's televised match. He said, you know, the past 13 times I've been on television, probably every thought that could possibly go through my head went through my head. But now, not real nervous this time. Much more relaxed outlook and perspective to his bowling profession this season. Gets him. But if he told you he wasn't nervous coming into today, he's lying. <laughs> there's no way I'm buying that. Again, another great break on the left lane, and Brad is making an adjustment, trying to get it locked in, and trips the four there and says, all right, I'm getting some things to go my way early on in this match. I have to take his word for it, right? I know these guys. Trust me, he was lying to you. <laughs> Here's Malat looking for three in a row. Real good shot there, not a very good result, and Les Malat leaving the ringing 10, and this match will be all tied up with a with a spare here. But watch the six pin, second from your right, going around the 10. Hard to string strikes together when you start leaving 10 pins. And we're going to talk about the oil pattern in our next segment, but not a whole lot of high scores this week. Only two 300 games this week here at Thunder Alley.
spent some time with Wes Malat over the summer. Him and I went to Japan in uh, Kadena Air Force Base in Okinawa, to be exact, uh, spent some time and bring some a little bit of home to the men and women of our armed forces uh, to a faraway place. Wes had a great time. I got to watch this guy up close, day in and day out, do some amazing things. We built this one tournament where he averaged almost 250, where the rest of us could barely average 210. So still just uh, two strikes uh, thus far for Malat. No open frames. And this shot here, it looks like he just misses it a little bit at release where he doesn't quite get the amount of hit he wants on it, and that ball just kind of pushes a little too far down the lane, leaving the two pin. Get the sense both guys still trying to figure out these lanes today. And you said it earlier, the scores were not very high this week. And when you look back at this pattern last season, it kind of fell right in the middle. It wasn't the high scoring pattern or the low scoring pattern. It was somewhere right in the center there. The cheetah pattern obviously being a very high scoring pattern. Asked Brad Angelo about his goals for this upcoming season. He said, I want to make one television show in the first half, two in the second half. Three shows would be a solid year. So he's, he's done his job so far in the first half of the season. We're only at tour stop number two. Heavy on that one. But what about winning one of those three? Well, winning his first title was his first absolute goal. He wants to allow himself, you know, to have a bad week, but not to let it drag him down and carry over to the next week. And uh, kind of a, a cleaner outlook this season. You know, in fact, he admitted he'd been tossing around the idea of leaving the tour and being home and being a husband and a dad. See how you convert the 3 6 10. That is not how you do it. First open frame of this first match of our stepladder final and the first opening we have seen. We'll see how he rebounds from this miscue here in the fifth frame. It... Brad Angelo has bowled well on television at times. He's struggled on television at times. And quite honestly, I think he's probably the best player out here that has not won a title. Better than Chris Lowshedder? Mm. Why'd you have to go there? <laughs> Lowshedder, the number one seed. We'll see him later today. That's a good bounce back toss from Angelo. Rebounds off an open frame to strike in the sixth. The conclusion of match one of four we have for you today when we return to Omaha. And we welcome you back to our continuing live coverage here in Omaha, Nebraska, the Pepsi Viper Championship. We apologize for some technical difficulties we are having here. So we'll take a look now at the lumber liquidator oil pattern this week, the Viper oil pattern. Back in the day, my buddy Mark would tell me about his buddy Steve. Who the Viper pattern, 38 feet in length. It's actually a foot longer than it was last season, and today we'll, this pattern will be used exclusively. The players will be playing left or right of the shaded area based on rev rate. The high hook players, big hook, they're going to be left of that, throwing into that shaded area. The straighter players are going to be playing right of that, right around first arrow. And this is what the professionals averaged on this pattern last season. You can see almost 27 pins a game higher than the amateurs. That was your Lumber Liquidators Know the Wood. Here's Wes Malott leading by 11 as he takes to the stage for his sixth frame. And Rob, on a sad note, our, uh, the head of lane maintenance out here, Mark Sabatini, his mother passed away last night. The PBA tour, and along with myself, would like to send out our condolences to his family. Well, we had a 7-10 opportunity last week with Sean Rash, and you said, if somebody can do it, Sean Rash falls in that category. I'm pretty sure Wes Malott also could be characterized as a potential 7-10 
pickup. Again, it has only been accomplished three times on television. The bedpost. Wes Malata is going to bring some heat with this shot. Let it rip, Wes. Couldn't pull that one out of the pit. So Wes's first open frame, so both have had one now. And the open frame by Angelo in the fifth, not quite as damaging as it once was. Wes Malott has not missed the pocket in this, well, excuse me, he has once. He went light, left a two pin. Brad Angelo's missed the pocket twice. Going Brooklyn to leave for 3 6 10. Found the pocket that time. Did Wes Malott. So Brad Angelo from Lockport, New York. About 20 minutes outside of Buffalo will step up and we want to remind you for all the latest and authentic PBA memorabilia head over to PBA.com click on the auction tab there you can bid on items such as game used jerseys bowling balls and autographed items it's all there at PBA.com Brad Angelo three times a bridesmaid looking for his first career title. He's been a member of the tour since 2002. Last year was second in Chicago. Little danger zone out there. <laughs> that, that ball's teetering on the edge and Obviously, there's a little friction spot there, but you better get it off your hand perfect. Watch this. This ball is on the one board. I don't know if he was excited because he threw a great shot or because that ball stayed on the lane. I'm going to tell you, that right gutter is loaded with a bunch of sirens right now calling for the ball to come their way. Nice use of Homer in the Iliad and Odyssey right there. It's hard to work that in the bowl. Um, not seeing too many back-to-back -back really nice tosses today. Angelo did start with back-to-back -back strikes and strikes in the sixth and the seventh as well, but very little carryover. And remember, he missed this spare in the fifth frame, the three six ten. Good get the left. ball to the right of the three pin, and the bowling ball will cover all three pins. He left the ten in the fifth. That was his first and only open frame. That's good there. He maintains a nine-pin lead, but Wes Malott's working on a strike in the seventh. Brad Angelo had the choice of starting lanes because he was the higher seed. He chose to have Wes Malott finish on this right lane, and right now this right lane looks a little tricky. The lead is his with a strike. Gives it the little Darth Vader in the thumb hole to get that perfect feel. Talking to Wes yesterday, he said this week he was kind of able to go around the pattern. Can you roll it, elaborate on that? Well, you're not seeing it right now because oh, boy, the lanes have be not fun. broken down enough. Wes Malott starting that ball just right a second arrow and actually playing further right than he's played all week. Said he was playing left and kind of slow hooking it. Yeah, and you're not going to see that unless he gets through this match and gets into the title match where the lanes break down enough and dry up enough for him to do that. Takes care of the 2-5, but he, he knows he had an opening there. Yeah, and he and knows. Let it slide. Right, and he could have taken the lead with a strike there. And the bad part is that he right. has to finish the match on the right lane, and he's only struck once there, and he doesn't look like he's very comfortable on that lane. So I, look, we, I look for this, this shot to be high flush. So we go to the foundation frame. Both bowlers will enter it off of spares. This he's one's smart. still anyone's game with Walter Ray Williams Jr. waiting in the wings. Get down! He likes that lane. Brad Angelo does not. Brad's got a finish on the left lane. 
Wes Malott's got to finish on the tricky right. But look at this. This is good stuff and good pin carry. Head pin goes to the sidewall, takes out the seven late. Keeps him in the match and gives him the possibility of striking out in the 10th and shooting 215. Brad Angelo can strike out 9th and 10th and shoot 224. Angelo, four strikes, two in each lane so far. Make it five strikes. And you can see that there's a little bit of room on that right lane for Brad Angelo. The shot before in the seventh was a couple of boards to the right of that. It sucked up and went high flush. That ball there, high flush. It's going to come down to what he can do on this left lane. He needs two strikes. And then some loose change to move on. We open up the 10th, both bowlers off of strikes in the ninth. Bright Angelo has never won on the PBA Tour. Big time ball. Yeah, that was a very confident shot there. He knows what the score is and he knows he only needs two strikes and two pins. Bang, high flush. One more strike puts him in the 220s with reasonable count. One more strike and he doesn't even need to keep it on the lane. Or I'm sorry, he does need to. So I was right the first time. You two strikes, two pins. You usually are. Not usually. <laughs> now if this is Norm Duke, right now he'd be saying, re-rack please. You think? Maybe. Big shot right here. Money! Pump that fist, Brad. He's got to keep it on the lane, knock two down. He's going to move on. He made the right adjustments on that left lane. He kept moving out, moving out. As you see, he takes out his interchangeable thumb. And goes from one ball to the next. And for, for the fans at home, they're looking to get the same feel and multiple bowling balls. That interchangeable thumb is the only way to go. Needs just two. We'll get it. Eight is enough. Brad Angelo, the three seed, moves on to take on Walter Ray Williams Jr. You got to give him a lot of credit, Rob. He was fine, getting himself fine-tuned on that on that left lane. He got a couple of breaks, made a big spare when he left the three six ten again in the eighth frame, and just got it dialed in, and then made the big shots there in the tenth frame. Brad Angelo, a member of the PBA Tour since 2002, three times a runner-up, has made 14 televised shows and now he is two wins away from his first ever title as Wes Malott finishes it off I don't think this is the last we'll see of Wes Malott no way it's too good a player like I mentioned earlier he led the qualifying round got into match play struggled in match play Found it Sorry, difficult we got a to long season to get Roto Grip on top. Found it difficult to Thank win matches. Pulled a big position round game just to make the telecast. So fighting That's some better. back inflammation issues. Was seeking a massage therapist yesterday. So the big nasty having to overcome some things. We'll see more of him, but you're going to see more of Brad Angelo today. Angelo takes it 222 to 195. Eight strikes in that match and. Well, you, you take down the big nasty, and who steps up? The living legend, Walter Ray Williams Jr. Up next, our top 50 bowler countdown continues, and we kick off match number two. For years, Lodo. And we welcome you back to Thunder Alley here in Omaha, Nebraska. We continue our countdown of the top 50 bowlers in PBA history. And at number 44, our first lefty, Patrick Allen, known for his meticulous approach and his nerves of steel. At number 43, it's Doug Kent, 
AKA Dougie Fresh, a winner of four major victories and is on the ballot for this year's Hall of Fame. Next up, 12-time winner Danny Wiseman, known for his wild shirts and being a bit of a bit of a gearhead, my friend. Yes, he is. Next up, Tom Baker, best known for winning the 2004 World Championships and earning a five-year exemption. The 54-year-old now spends most of his time double-dipping on both the Big Tour and the Senior Tour. And tied with him, Joe Berardi, Hall of Famer, inducted in 90, winner of the U.S. Open, the Tournament of Championships, and the USBC Masters. And last but not least, Mike McGrath, the smooth-stroking lefty, captured three majors, including back-to-back -back national championships. And here's Bo Burton with a spotlight on number 40, Joe Berardi. Tied for 40th spot is 11-time titleist Joe Berardi. The native of Brooklyn, New York, made his first title a notable one as he captured the 1979 U.S. Open at the tender age of 24. Berardi would add two more major trophies to his mantle, by taking home first place in both the 1982 Masters and the 1983 Tournament of Champions. His stellar career was rewarded in 1990 with his induction into the PBA Hall of Fame. Again, our thanks to Bo Burton for voicing over these features all season long. It was great seeing him last week in Wichita as well, and it's always a treat to see Walter Ray Williams Jr. bowl live. 27 years on the tour, 44 titles, looking for number 45 and asking for the house music to be cut. Your number two seed. We've seen that a few times before. <laughs> You ever seen Walter Ray ball on television play the outside part of the lane and strike a lot? Red ball at five. <laughs> you know, in the writing was kind of on the wall. You, you watched where uh, Brad and Wes Mallott were playing, and you're like, wow, well, where's Walter Ray going to play when, when he gets on the lanes? Fired right up first arrow. Not too many better than him at that. Apparently, Brad forgot his no pest strip because there's some flying insects flying around him right now. That's the word I just got. Great start to this one. Again, Angelo took care of West Malott, 222 to 195. Angelo, the number three seed. Runs bowling camps throughout the country, cleverly called the Brad Angelo Bowling Camps. That would make sense. Spent a lot of time in the marketing department with that one. <laughs> Had about eight or nine camps this summer, none of them in his hometown of Buffalo. I mean, they're, he's talking California, Indiana, Michigan, Tennessee, even Medford, Oregon, one of our favorite stops as well. And for the second consecutive match, Angelo opens with back-to-back -back jacks. As the day progresses, I only see this oil pattern getting better and better. As the lanes start to dry up a bit, the guys will see some more, and the, and the women will see some more friction, and that should help the scores get higher. As opposed to that ball not seeing any friction. One of the things I like about the stepladder format for television is the guy that wins has momentum. The guy coming on needs to find it in a hurry. Right now, Walter Ray strikes in the first frame and leaves the 2-8 on the right lane. And as you can see, this is how you can this is how you convert double wood or something with a sleeper. Both of them great bowling turns, if you ask me. Which and, one do you like better? And I didn't invent either one of them. Mercifully, take a look at our match number two matchup. Brad Angelo, seventh year on the tour. Walter Ray Williams Jr. Yeah, you know, it's going to be interesting to see where Walter Ray Williams Jr. ends up in our top 50 countdown. It's a no-brainer. He's in the top three, maybe top two. I, I would say no-brainer top two. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Well, fortunate drop there, but these last couple tosses 
We're not going to go into the archive vault of vintage Walter Ray. And a little left of target for Walter Ray, and he pulls it right into the dry part of the lane where Brad Angelo is playing. That ball's not going to hold pocket from there. So right now, Walter Ray needs to summon all of his instincts and all that maple moxie and start making some adjustments right now. Otherwise, Brad Angelo is going to run away. Brad is comfortable now. He's got a great idea and a nice blueprint of what his bowling ball is going to do when he lets go of it. One of the perks of opening the day on the lanes and not having to sit and wait is you, you know how these lanes have broken down already. It makes your adjustments just a little bit easier. Beautiful shot, leaving the ring in 10. And Brad does look very comfortable. He knows what he wants to do with his ball speed. He knows what he wants to do with rotation. And that's going to make the task that much tougher for Walter Ray Williams Jr. to get by him in this match. Angelo with more of a straight approach to his bowling, particularly this week. And, and he said, you know, you can hook it, you can go straight, but if you're throwing it straight this week, it makes your adjustments easier than the hookers, if you will, as the lanes start breaking down. I know, as soon as I said that, I said, I need to find another term for that. How about did, crankers? We you. could use crankers That'll instead be, of... Yes. Yeah. Uh, but, no, I, I'm with you, Rob. Just let me, uh, <laughs> let me gain my composure here for a second. I appreciate that. Another strike for Angelo. Anytime the pattern gets tricky, the scores are low. Straighter's greater. The adjustments are, are a lot, a lot, uh, a lot, a lot more subtle. You don't have to make these big giant moves, and it's just easier to make one or two or three board adjustments than when you're moving one or two arrows. Second strike for Walter Ray after back-to-back -back spares. Take a look at the very early stages of the Player of the Year points list. Norm Duke with his win last week, and that being a major, sitting on top of everybody with 24 points. There's Chris Barnes, the runner-up in second. Barnes here today, getting some practice time in Omaha. Back, back in it. Back. back in it. Never, ever count that man out. No, he's he's just too good. You don't win 44 times not being able to make adjustments or deal with adversity. <coughs> three out of his first four frames have been strikes for Angelo. Your number three seed. Two in a row for him now. Yeah, he's high flushed every shot. So now it only looks it looks like the only thing that's going to stop Red Angelo would be bad pin carry. I, I mean, he's got a good look. He he likes his bar reaction. He's comfortable. All he has to do now is make good shots and hope that all ten go down. some time to sit and reflect on that as we head to a break. Walter Ray in a bit of a hole when we return. Horseshoe talk and triple digit birthday wishes from that man, Walter Ray Williams Jr. Omaha, Nebraska. Thunder Alley hosted PBA event last year. That was won by Mike Scroggins over Walter Ray Williams Jr. And there is Chris Loeschetter in some of the back lanes. Keeping loose, getting warmed up as he sees his first career. PBA title. There is Walter Ray Williams Jr. He wanted to give a quick shout out to his grandmother, Violet Ehler, turns 100 today in Modesto, California. Walter Ray's mom and sisters there visiting. 
They are hoping they can find ESPN somewhere in the nursing home. So hopefully they had good luck with that. We're big in nursing homes. Well, Brooklyn it. Uh-uh. Well, Walter's going to stare down the lanes here. That makes sense. Get it right and it goes Brooklyn. Yeah, well, this ball looked like it was headed for the gutter and, and just stays on and then goes Brooklyn. Very interesting. But getting back to your story about Grandma <laughs> Violet yeah. turning 100, uh, Walter Ray told me last night that she used to call him Oscar Pete Sam. Oscar I, Pete Sam. Yeah, and I said, why did she call you Oscar Pete Sam? He said, well, there was 18 grandkids. It was hard to keep track of us. I said, were there any grandkids named Oscar Peter Sam? He said, no. <laughs> there we go, Walter Ray. And Walter Ray, of course, a, an avid sportsman in the horseshoe world, sixth at the world tournament this year. Sat, as he said, sounds better than it than it really was. Probably the worst he ever played there. Very disappointed in that two-week tournament in York, Pennsylvania. This game going downhill. That's what he said. Well, still one of the best. He makes a lot more money bowling than he does playing horseshoes, so I wouldn't worry about it. He's still bowling great. I would think there would be limited sponsorship opportunities in the horseshoe world, but I could be way off. for that one, huh? Mm -mm. How's it feel? Oh, uh, welcome Does to the Hambone good? State. It did feel nice. Somebody's got a laminated Hambone sign here. That's taking it to the next level. Brad Angelo dialed in, high flushing every shot. Look at the demeanor and the concentration on his face. This guy is serious. He said, he said, Randy, you know, I got a down play trying to win that first title. I'll just go out and bowl. That's what he's doing today. Looking for five in a row. Ooh, boy. Three, four, six, seven. Well, this one is the first bad shot of this match that he's thrown, and he gets it left of target and pays the price, leaving the three, four, six, seven. Get the ball over here to the right side of the six pin, drive it over into the four seven. The ball will take out the six, excuse me. Get that ball to the right side of the three pin. Slide it over. Pete Weber made this split famous. It seemed like every time he left one on television, he would convert. Open frame. In the eight for Angelo. Is this going to be enough of a window for Walter Ray to crawl through? Walter Ray with two strikes in the eighth and ninth can take the lead. Our PBA Tour coverage continues next weekend. The Lake County Indiana Golden Anniversary Championship. The seniors will be on display for the first time. Live coverage next Sunday, 1 Eastern, right here on ESPN. Mm. Now the right lane is the mystery lane for Walter A. And he's gone light. He's gone Brooklyn. And now he goes just a little bit high, leaving the four pin. And he has to finish the match on this lane. He is going at a 207 pace. Brad Angelo is in the 220s. And the key here now, Rob, is for Walter Ray to put pressure on his opponent. He can strike here in the ninth frame and strike out in the 10th frame. That'll give him 227 and will force Brad Angelo to throw a double with two frames remaining. This match, kind of typical of the whole week for Walter Ray. Where he said he really had to grind it out. Not a term you normally hear from Walter Ray. You know, he's been battling some wrist issues as well. We saw that at the end of last season. And, you know, part of it's arthritis. Part of it is old age, according to him. It's not perfect, but manageable. And obviously the wrist, a, a vital component to any bowler. Here is Angelo in the foundation frame. Had an open frame eight in the eighth. 
but has tossed six strikes. The number three seed trying to earn a title shot versus Chris Loeschetter. If that happens, we are guaranteed a first-time winner on the PBA Tour. It's looking more and more like that may be the case. Well, he's composed himself nicely today, keeping his emotions intact. Not really hooping it up. He's just taking care of business. And right now, with a strike here in the 10th frame, he can all but seal the deal and move on to the title match. He can max at 241. Best Walter Ray could do would be a 227. And Brad is going to refocus himself. He clearly knows the implications of this shot. Yeah, young child in the audience making some noise. Young child crying, apparently a Walter Ray fan. <laughs> Walter Ray says, nope, it's not mine. Walter Ray was walking with his daughter around here yesterday, Rebecca Lynn. I know a thing or two about taking screaming children out of quiet complexes. He leaves the 10. And just another great shot. He had to back off twice, gets up and just pures it, only to leave a ring in 10. Watch this. This ball's beautiful right into the 1-3. Six pin goes around the 10. And now, Walter Ray Williams Jr. can steal this match away from Brad Angelo. Two strikes. And some change. And Walter Ray can move on here as Brad Angelo will finish up in the 10th. And Brad Angelo changing thumbs. Try a different bowling ball here. And that was the trick. He needed to get at least seven in count to force Walter Ray to double. Angelo had eight strikes in his first match, and that was his eight. Here in the second, will that be enough to hold off the living legend? 221, the score to beat. Walter Ray doesn't know where to go on this shot. He needs two, sh two strikes and six pins and is not sure where to throw it on this right lane. Must strike situation here. Needs two and then five pins. There's strike one. Uh-oh. When you have a legend down, you keep him there. What a great seesaw match, and all of a sudden, when Walter Ray looked like it was over, he now has life, and he's one strike away of advancing to the title match. moves on. We'll have two non-winners in the title match. Walter Ray throws a really good shot and leaves a blowout 7-10. Unbelievable. Walter Ray is not going to be happy. He grinded this one out like he has done all week long, and he thought he had it. We thought he had it. But Angelo perseveres, moves on, 221 to 214.
When we return, the ladies take to the lanes. T is for Texas. In the chase, T is a full tilt tussle that's always too close to call. Jimmy Johnson turns up the temperature as he races toward a third straight title. The Dickies 500 at Texas, today at 3 Eastern on ABC. This is a photo of our first lumber liquidator store. We didn't have a fancy showroom or an expensive location. Our goal was simply to provide great hardwood flooring at the best possible prices anywhere. Today, as the largest direct retailer of hardwood flooring, we're still not fancy and a bit out of the way, but we continue to have the best hardwood flooring at incredible prices. Two and a quarter inch solid oak utility grade flooring, only 99 cents a square foot. Supreme pre-finished horizontal natural bamboo, just $1.99 a square foot. Visit your local lumber liquidators or lumberliquidators.com. Chris Paul comes to the line with the game in his hands. Expecting the future of the sport of bowling. Bowl with us. Welcome back to Omaha, home of five Fortune 500 companies. On the road next week, just outside of Chicago, we are in Hammond, Indiana. And that telecast will also feature a championship match between two senior PBA Tour players for the first time. The seniors on TV since 01. And then the following week, just outside of Detroit, Taylor Lanes in Taylor, Michigan. The Chameleon Championship. This marks the 24th season of PBA Tour has visited Taylor Lanes. Great venue there. And we get set for the first of seven PBA Women's Series finals this year on our broadcast. Feldman Nation in attendance. Michelle Feldman from Auburn, New York. Continuing her warm-up tosses, and she'll take on Stephanie Nation. There's Feldman on the right in the purple, and Stephanie Nation on the left in the black. Nation grew up in Miami, Florida, bowled collegiately at the University of Central Florida, now makes her home in Arlington, Texas. And seeking a full-time job, this this from the hint hint category at the United States Bowling Congress, who just relocated conveniently enough to Arlington, Texas, looking for something in marketing. Stephanie, I have done your best resume posting. The rest is up to you. What kind of cut are you getting, Rob? Not much. Okay. Not much. Just checking. <laughs> Heavy on that first toss. Leaving the 310. The object here is to get the ball to the right side of the three pin, have it deflect off into the 10, and Rob, we call this the baby split. Even you could make this. Let's not get carried away. Nation cleans it up. I see that. The nation will take a seat with that eight spare up now. Michelle Feldman from Auburn, New York, about 20 minutes southwest of Syracuse, owns a bowling center, Falcon Lanes. He's owned it for about a year and a half now. 16 lane center there in Auburn. Boom! How about that? Take a closer look at our matchup here in the women's Pepsi Viper Championship. And High game goes to Feldman. And this matchup really is uh, the tale of two completely different games. Michelle Feldman, the power player, she's deeper than any of the guys have been all day. And Stephanie Nation, who's that finesse down and in type of shot. And you'll see the difference in their follow through. You were talking to me about this earlier. Let's watch Feldman's follow through. <laughs> she drops 10 for the second straight time. Well, you watch Michelle Feldman's follow through. It's nice, it's nice and short and kind of cut off a lot like all of the power players on tour. You looked at, you, we saw Wes Malott earlier. He's got that real short abbreviated follow through. Now watch the follow through of Stephanie Nation. Much more elongated. Absolutely. The longer the follow through, the straighter the ball's going to go. She almost missed the pocket. I mean, she didn't almost. She missed the pocket. I meant to say... She almost touches her back on that follow through. Right, and, and you know, that's very typical with a lot of the women that we see, and that produces a very straight shot. You watch this follow through, the hand touches back. Now, let's look at some of the pauses. Great balance, obviously, she knows how to bowl. She's a very good bowler. But when it comes to trying to hook a bowling ball, 
You want to cut that follow through off and get that ball to start digging in early. Yeah, she says she's more of a finesse bowler. Plays those lanes a little bit straighter than Feldman will. Nice pickup. Dangerous way to shoot that spare because you run the risk of leaving the back pin, the eight pin. That's a good shot right here. Her spare game has been tested already. An eight spare and then a six spare through the first two frames. We begin the third. Her counterpart, Michelle Feldman, has been nothing but strikes. Looks like she's got the Mike Scroggins wrist wear there. Pure pocket there for Nation. And now Feldman, I asked her, describe your game. It was a quick, easy one sentence. I bowl like the men. And then she laughed. <laughs> she does. Get on down! You know, Michelle Feldman is great. It, she's a lot of fun to watch because, one, she hooks it a lot, and, and uh, she throws a lot of strikes, but she's also one of the funniest people you'll ever meet. She's got a great sense of humor about her right now. There's nothing funny about tripping the 4-9 for a three-bagger on your opponent, but she loves it. Michelle Feldman on the verge of a ham bone. <laughs> and a great story about her grandparents coming up. I can't wait. Oh, that's a huge break there, mm -hmm. tripping the nine pin out late. It makes the three six ten much e easier than the three six nine ten. She looked like she just kind of hammered on that shot a little bit at the bottom of the swing, just got too much of it, and caused that ball to hook a little bit early. We saw Angelo shoot it twice earlier today. He was fifty percent on the three six ten. That's some quick math there on the one for two. Oof. First open frame of this hmm. women's championship match for either competitor. <sighs> we are hoping that Michelle's grandfather, Gary, is watching this, and I'll tell you why in a moment. Didn't you have a ham bone story or something in there? <laughs> Here is Nation. Graduated in 06 from Central Florida with a degree in criminal justice. Strike is criminal. <laughs> also has her masters in communication. Bright young woman. And with that strike there, she just took the lead. And nothing like taking advantage of your opponent when they give you an opening. Kind of like you taking advantage of me every time we do television. How's that? <laughs> every time I give you an opening, you're right there. It's team play, my friend. <laughs> You're telling me I don't give you any any goals to finish? Uh, you don't you don't serve up too many softballs. Get on down! Come on, well, nothing like a little trip four seven ten when you're working on a couple of strikes to irritate your opponent. Watch this. That's nice. Three in a row for Nation after opening up with consecutive spares. Now we go back to Feldman here in the fifth. She enters off an open frame. There we go. Oh, she blows it up. <laughs> I asked her why is she on the tour this season. She said, and laughing. Yeah, you know, mostly my grandparents. They just love bowling. They miss seeing me on TV, so they kind of heavy-handed her into getting back onto the lanes. Her grandma, Linda, is home watching right now. Hi, Linda. Her dad, her grandfather, Gary, on his way to Atlantic City right now for a bowling convention. His plan, pulling over somewhere on the road and hoping to find the ESPN broadcast. Gary, we hope you're watching and enjoying your granddaughter right now. Michelle Feldman, just to add to that, the first woman ever to fire a 300 game on national television. 
Back to back, Jack. She's back. Feldman slugs them into the pit. Nation with three in a row. Tight one here. Up next, we'll tell you about the rest of the women's PBA Tour stops and have the conclusion of our women's Pepsi Viper Championship next. Here at this modern-day watering hole, this urban Serengeti, it's man meets reptile. So, Lucy, what are you doing? Just a little online shopping. You should check out Geico.com. Get a free rate quote. If you like what you see, you can buy it online, over the phone, or at your local Geico office. Cool. Remarkable. Oh, no. Help. Did you hear something? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. This is a photo of our first lumber liquidator store. We didn't have the PBA Women's Series Pepsi Viper Championship. Women's Series sponsored by the United States Bowling Congress. This is the first of seven PBA Women's Series events this season. An increase of events from last season when there were only four. You take a look at the remaining stops. A couple weeks away will be outside Detroit in Taylor. Here's a future female PBA -er. and Here are two current ones. Stephanie Nation right stepping here. up here in the sixth. Nation looking for a ham bone. This is the first live televised bowling event for both of these women. A lot of signs with food on them. In the, in the stands, in the crowd here. It's a hungry crowd. They're hungry for bowling. Yeah! Hambo! <laughs> All right, well, Thorbagger increases her lead to 13. Robstone's grocery list. Tremendous. Are you serious? That's tremendous. <laughs> That kid did not see the sandwich I ate yesterday on the football broadcast. Tell us did you about see it. That thing? Tell us about it. Yeah, I heard nice. a little bit about it, but how, how big was that sandwich you tried I to eat? I, need, I needed an angioplasty when that thing was done. <laughs> <laughs> Nation up by 13. We begin the seventh. Looking for five in a row. <laughs> Throw the dice. No Yahtzee. She had a little bit of an issue at the foul line. Looked like she stuck just a bit. Pulls that ball just a little bit high. Watch this. A little balance issue. But a good arm swing and a good release will help you keep that ball online. Looking to convert a single pin spare, and she only missed one for the week. Picks it up. She really started competing seriously in high school so she really found her niche in the sport and this the next stop for her next up michelle feldman strikes in the fifth and the sixth looking for three in a row she's been nothing but strikes outside of that open frame in the fourth come on ten yes no oh, that messenger Really a 10 pin? The messenger came a calling, the nobody home. Oh well, she gave this shot a little bit of room. Check this out. This is wide right, and because she creates all those revolutions and has all that power, she got that ball to get back to the pocket. Ambitious goal setting for her this season. Wants to win two stops and make four shows. More insects? I believe so. Out. Thought that one was leaking a little right, didn't you? Yeah, she's making this spare shooting a, a little bit of an adventure, but no harm, no foul there on the 10 pin. That's a bonus. Pick the 10 pin. It's all about striking from here on out for Michelle Feldman. She can strike out and shoot 242. Stephanie Nation still in the 220s. Down by 13, eighth frame. I like watching Feldman toss the rock. Yeah, she's uh, very entertaining, very fun to watch because she can do what the guys can do. And, you know, you don't see that a lot in any professional sport, including professional bowling. 
So we go from the power game of that lady, Michelle Feldman, to the finesse style of Stephanie Nation. Roll to Hambone, strikes three through six, but a spare in the seventh. Interesting note, Rob, is the winningest player in the history of the PBA is Walter Ray Williams Jr. at 44 career titles, and Walter Ray throws it straight. Stephanie Nation throws it straight. Norm Duke won last week's World Championships throwing it straight. So why hook it? I'm just throwing it's it fair, out. It's a fair I'm question. I'm throwing it out there for you, buddy. Nation, a member of Team USA in 05, 06, 07, and 08. <laughs> Heavy on that one, but leaves just a solo pin left standing. And now the opening that Michelle Feldman was hoping for has just arrived, courtesy of the three pin. Stephanie converts here the best she can shoot is 235. Michelle Feldman can strike out to shoot 242. This is her first single pin spare attempt. And Rob, I think it's obvious that there's not a lot of room on the lanes. You've got to make good shots and be fairly accurate. And, you know, that's, it, Talking about oil patterns and lane conditions, you, you, I watch it week in and week out at home, watching folks bowl on easy oil patterns. And that's what the, the people at home bowl on league, it's easy oil patterns. There's only one way to get better. If you want to improve your game, you got to bowl on tougher oil patterns. Not hook. Missed the pocket. And a very challenging spare conversion staring Michelle <sighs> Feldman. And for her to have any chance in this match, she's going to have to convert here. This just looks like it's really quick out of her hand, and it's going sideways, and it gets out to that hang spot and leaves the 1 2 8 10 washout. Oh! And that was a bad break. The best, the best Michelle Feldman can shoot now is 210. Oh, Stephanie Nation going to 225 pace. Michelle needs to strike out to put some pressure on her opponent. There's her seventh strike. And there is said pressure. It's always guaranteed when you don't need it. Uh, you got to maintain that composure there, Stephanie. It's not done yet, but it's close. No, it's not because uh, she could get up in the 10th and leave a bucket and miss it and actually lose if Michelle Feldman strikes out. Now she just needs to keep it on the lane. Now, Nation is doing the math in her head and she is seeing numbers that she likes. Feldman takes care of the 10. Three pins will do it. Stephanie Nation oh, looking for her first title. Gets up and cures it. Congratulations, Stephanie Nation. You can see her fighting off the emotion. Smile and enjoy it. Well, she said she came in and this season with a different mindset, and this week the Viper pattern allowed her to play her A game. She is your champion.
Rides that one out, ends with the spare. Takes home the crystal. Congratulations to Stephanie Nation. When we return the Geico Championship recap, and we get you prize for today's men's final. Next Tuesday night, one mistake. Both John McCain and Barack Obama in one of their last national interviews before the election. Live coverage, 8.30 Eastern. Time now for the Geico Championship recap. Randy, Rob. <laughs> Match number one, Brad Angelo taking on Wes Malott. And Brad Angelo strikes in the ninth, tenth, and eleventh to shut out the big nasty. Brad Angelo moves on and faces the greatest player in the history of the sport, Walter Ray Williams Jr. He leaves a ring and ten first ball in the tenth to give this man a shot to win. But instead, it's Walter Ray leaving the pocket 7-10 to lose. Brad Angelo goes on to bowl for the title. And he will take on the number one seed, Chris Loeschetter. History will be made. Neither of these competitors have ever won on the PBA Tour. That is about to change. Daniel Jenkins, watch this roll. Welcome back to ESPN's continuing live coverage of the 2008 PBA Pepsi Viper Championship coming your way from Thunder Alley here in Omaha, Nebraska. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson with you as we get set for our men's title match. The number one seed, Chris Loeschetter, to take on the three seed, Brad Angelo. Neither of these men have ever won on the PBA Tour. And Mike Miniman will be knocked out of the Tournament of Champions because we will have a new winner. Angelo has been consistent. 222 versus Malat, 221 versus Walter Ray Williams Jr. Eight strikes in both matches. Oof, how did that avoid the 10? And a big adjustment here from the last match that Brad Angelo bowled. He was playing outside, for, uh, outside the second arrow. And now he has moved into the center part of the lane. And you're right. How does this head pin coming across not get to the 10? Look at the air it got. Had some elevation. Mm -hmm. Takes care of the single pin spare. Up now, Chris Loeschetter from Avon, Ohio, western suburb of Cleveland. Four times he has finished an event second, looking for his first title in 79 career events. Rob, this is going to be a dog-eat-dog -dog match. We're just going to have to wait around and see which one's wearing the bacon pants. But Chris Loeschetter has bowled some big games on television. He shot 245 against Norm Duke at the U.S. Open. The only problem was Norm Duke bowled 260. He's been up against Walter Ray Williams Jr., so he knows what the pressure's like. He's felt it. The only thing missing is that one victory, and it just looks like he's positioning himself to get that done. Two of the best who've never won dueling right now. Yeah, I agree. Chris Loeschetter playing that deep inside line using two different bowling balls. Let's see if Brad uses that same strategy or if he goes with the same ball in two different angles. Here's the 0-2-0-3 PBA Rookie of the Year, Angelo, off a nine spare in the first. Finds the pocket, drops him off. Very interesting strategy for Brad Angelo. He's playing right of second arrow on the right lane, left of second arrow on the left. So there's your argument. Which one is the better player to have not won a title? Rob Stone. You're the expert. <laughs> I told you who I thought. I, you know, I just give. Well, the you edge. said it was Angelo until I, give, I reminded you, Loeschetter. Well, I give the edge to Brad because he's been out a little bit longer. It, it was only a few years ago where he was the number one ranked player in the world. And, 
And let me just stress that that was via point list on tour. He was a number one player on the point list. Up steps Chris Loeschetter. Said he really moved in with the field through qualifying Friday night. Decided to stay to the right. Soft hands is how he described himself. Really clean at the bottom. Elaborate after he tosses this one. Yeah. The player talks about soft hand. It's they're not. They're trying not to grab it at the bottom. And the other thing that Chris Lotion is working on is trying to get the bowling ball or get his hand to the inside part of the ball at the point of release. And I say this all the time in my clinics and my teaching engagements. Amateurs work the outside part of the ball. Professionals work the inside part of the ball. And that's what Chris Lowshitter is doing, is working the inside part. And that's what he did this week in our Flomax weekly update. Looking for four in a row. When player falls off balance like that, generally speaking, it's because they get a little quick and their timing becomes a little bit early, so then there's a balance issue. But when you have early timing, the ball almost always goes left of target. Misses the 10. And it is suddenly awfully quiet in Omaha. Oof, the conclusion of Low Shedder, Angelo, when we return to Omaha. A great moment, but Frank wasn't in the picture. He was in the men's room going again. Another moment, but Bob really needed to go. And when the guy snapped this one, Charlie was stuck in the men's room having trouble going. These male urinary symptoms could be due to BPH, also called an enlarged prostate. But for many guys, prescription Flomax reduces their urinary symptoms due to BPH in one week. Only your doctor can tell if you have BPH, not a more serious condition like prostate cancer. Avoid driving or hazardous tests for 12 hours after your first dose or increase in dose as a sudden drop in blood pressure may occur, rarely resulting in fainting. If considering cataract surgery, tell your eye surgeon you've taken Flomax. Common side effects are runny nose, dizziness, and decrease in semen. Get the picture? Take a moment to ask your doctor if Flomax is right for you and call 877-4-FLOMAX for a free one-week trial. For many men, Flomax can make a difference in one week. This is a photo of our first lumber liquidator store. We didn't have a fancy show. Or to go. Real breakfast 24-7. By Geico. 15 minutes could save 15% on your car insurance. Visit geico.com. And by Lumber Liquidators. Hardwood flooring for less. Absolutely gorgeous day in Omaha. We take a live look at Bill Straub, head coach at the University of Nebraska. He's got a couple of PBA titles on his resume, sitting next to Tom Clark, the VP and COO of PBA. And Bill Straub with an intense interest in this game as he watches Chris Loeschetter, who bowled for two seasons at the University of Nebraska. Loeschetter's had a long time to sit and think about that open frame in the fourth. And as we go to Angelo, looking for three strikes in a row as he steps up for his effort in the fourth. But it won't go down. Mm -mm. Well, that was one that Brad really wanted, too. Again, talking about taking advantage of openings given to you by your opponent. Right here was another quality shot. The 10 pin gets nudged and doesn't go. And with a spare, Brad Angelo will lead this match by two. And there's the spare. Asked him what this potential first title, you know, how, how he would react. and said, you know, I'm, I'm kind of an emotional guy, Rob. Not really sure how I'm going to react. It, 
Could be screaming, could be crying, could be jumping, could be deer in headlights. No idea, but we're still a ways away from that point. We begin the fifth. And remember, neither one of these players has, has ever won a title. This shot here, Brad Angelo gets away with. Goes right through the heart, only leaving the 6'10. So another good break. To go with the bad one that he got when he left the ringing 10 on a double in the fourth. I think the key shot for Chris Lowshedder is the one coming up to see how he rebounds from missing a single pin spare on national television. It's been a long time to sit and mull that one over. A commercial break and then Angelo toss it. So here is Lowshedder. Opened up with three straight strikes and then followed it with an open frame in the fourth. You know, you hear a lot of talk about the physical game and bowling balls that players are using, and this guy's got a great physical game, and boy, he can really hook it, and this guy can go straight. I think the one thing that's overlooked is the most important, and that's the mental part of this game, because the mind is what controls the body and allows it to perform under pressure, and trust me when I tell yeah. you that, yeah, he's excited about making a single pin spare. But these guys are under a lot of pressure. The players under an extreme amount of pressure. To get your body to respond oh, in the right way is, is vital to your success out here. That was an angry celebration, mocking. It'll be interesting to see what his mental makeup is right now. He's got a tie ball game. Mm -hmm. We begin the sixth. <laughs> Walked away from that one with a lot of confidence. Throw a ball, man. Throw it. Bright future for Chris Lowshedder. He's a great player. And both of these guys are going for the same thing today, and that's their first ever career title. There's 38-year-old Brad Angelo. Finds the pocket. Drop and give me 10. Rep. Brad told us last night his first ever show he made on the PBA Tour was in Council Bluffs five years ago, just right down the road. Something to be said about this area for Angelo. Finished 14th last week, said he did not practice a whole lot coming into the season. I was say he took about 60 days of vacation inside his house, a staycation. Picnics in the backyard, going to the zoo, visiting Niagara Falls. That sounds like house arrest. Another strike. What about house arrest? I love the term staycation, though. Welcome to our economy. Great, great shot. Another one of many that he's thrown today. So these two entered the sixth tied, and so far they've been masking each other's shots. We will remain tied if Low Shedder can get a strike here in the seventh. Heavy. A little trapped. Yeah. Well, he, you heard him say he's trapped, so now the move is right of where he is or left of where he is. You can't keep staying, you can't keep staying in the same spot and trying to force that ball into the pocket. Remember the shot before this one on that right lane went light, this one goes high. Advantage Angelo. And the good news for Low Shedder is that he's going to finish the match on the left lane, and he appears to have found a home on that left lane. Or at least looks like he's more comfortable. Big shot here, eight frame, trailing by ten.
in leaves the single pin 10. And remember, he missed this conversion earlier in the match in the fourth frame. He really wanted that shot there to set up his ninth and tenth, and he knows just how big that shot was, but you're right. He missed the same single pin spare back in the fourth. Not this time. You know, it's just a lapse of concentration. He throw a bad shot, leave a ten pin, and he gets up and just whiffs it. And that's all it is, is concentration. These players can make single pin spares and ten pins with their eyes closed. Next week, we're just outside of Chicago at the Lake County, Indiana Golden Anniversary Championship. Senior Tour will be on display that Sunday as well. Live coverage of the PBA Tour on ESPN. One week from today at 1 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Brad Angelo in the eighth and in the driver's seat, seeking his first ever PBA Tour title. Looking good for Brad. You know, we talk about versatility on a weekly basis out here. Brad Angelo is showing you his. Being able to play multiple angles out here on the PBA Tour is a must. Brad Angelo playing out on the right lane, in on the left lane, and right now is on the verge of capturing his very first title. Long pause here as his ball is lollygagging its way to the ball return and there it is times like this the less time you're allowed to think the better oh this is no time to be thinking this is where you put it on autopilot you get up look at your spot where you're putting your feet look at your target and go we begin the ninth <laughs> saw something and <laughs> Another bug, I believe, on the lane. So this delay between shots gets extended. Did you not shower this morning? You bring all these flies in with you? That was awful. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, that's all right. I take it back, buddy. We'll relive that one on our conference call this week. All right. Need to regain his composure, focus in on the job at hand. Ten in the pit is all he's thinking right here. And the first signs of emotions we've seen all day from Brad Angelo because he's been that focused. What a great shot. Watch this. That's what I'm talking about. Not there yet, but mm, he can smell it. The pressure on his low shedder. But Chris low shedder can strike out for 226. And that would force Brad Angelo to mark in the 10th frame, any kind of mark. Low shedder will need all three here. Whatever he does, he cannot shut out Brad Angelo. He is not going to walk away from this title match. Angelo still firmly in control. That likes his paired up, Nick. Get your friends back. <laughs> You know what it is? It's it's so much warmer here than it really should be this time of the year. Last time we were here, Randy was sleeting and snowing in the morning. It's beautiful out right now. Right now, Chris Lowshitter looking for another shot. 
Brooklyn does not fall for him. Just forced at the bottom, and, and the ball reads the oil pattern early and has no chance of staying on line. And right now, Brad Angelo just needs to keep it on the lane, and he's going to win his first title. Rose Schenner with a wave to the audience, not the kind of wave he was hoping to give them. The former University of Nebraska product sits down. Brad Angelo stands up. He has bowled four consecutive strikes. As he begins the 10th, does not need much for his first ever tour title. say is a PBA champion. His first tour title. And it's been a long time coming. performance by Brad Angelo making all the right moves and making a lot of great shots today. Remember, this is a guy who was thinking about stepping away from the game this offseason. Really tossing and turning. Wanting to spend more time with his family. But boy, this one is worth it for him. There is some celebrating going on right now in Lockport, New York and celebrating here in Omaha. Yeah, Michelle, yeah! Angelo's done it. Tour title for Brad Angelo doing it from the three seed slot, Randy. That's how I won my first title. I, I started on the bottom rung of the ladder and went all the way. Brad Angelo got in a groove, saw the lanes changing, made the right adjustments, and threw great shots. Eight strikes in this championship match. Next week, we are live from the Lake County, Indiana Golden Anniversary Championship as you take a look at our two winners today. Stephanie Nation did it on the ladies' side. Brad Angelo on the men's. For Randy Peterson and our entire crew, I'm Rob Stone. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more continuing coverage, look on over to ESPN News momentarily. Brad Angelo finally wins his first tour title.